Welcome to the next lecture on the course introduction to our software. In this lecture, we will continue with our earlier topic that we, uh, that we wanted to learn different types of uh, commands, function and aspects of displaying an output. So now in this uh, lecture, uh, we are going to deal with two aspects. One is replacement of a string and uh, second thing is this uh, manipulations with the alphabets like as you want to change the lower case alphabets into upper case or vice versa. So first of all, we talk about uh, that in case if uh, uh, we have a string, then how to count the numbers of characters in the string. For example, you have got a sentence and you want to know that how many letters are there or how many characters are there. For example, in say many software you see, for example, in say MS Word, there is always a number in the bottom on the left side which counts that how many letters you have typed or how many characters you have typed. So similarly, in any programming language, in different places you may need to count the number of characters. Sometimes you have seen that whenever you are trying to fill up an online form, then that always says that uh, you have a limit of say 200 characters and as soon as you type more than 200 characters, it will say no, this cannot type or it will give you an option that okay, now 20 characters left, 18 character, characters left and so on. So this type of option is useful in such situations. Okay. So, uh, so now the option is this, suppose I want to count the number of characters in a string. The option or the command or the function for this is nchar and inside this argument you have to write down the string of which you want to count the number of characters. Let me take here an example and try to understand it. Suppose I write say here uh, one sentence R course 24. July 2017, right. So if you try to count how many characters are here, 1, then a blank space 2, then C3, O4, U5, R6, S7, E8, then a blank space 9, 210, 411, this full stop, dot 12, 0, 13, 7, 14, full stop 15, this is 16, 0 is 17, 1 is 18 and 7 is here 19. So you have to note down that I am also counting the blank spaces, blank space is also taken as a character. Now when I try to uh, use here a command say nchar and inside the argument inside the bracket I write x. That means I want to count the number of characters in this statement, in this string. And you can see here that we have counted here 19 characters and here you get here the answer as say 19. And similarly, if you try to take another string, suppose I write number of participants colon blank space 25. So similarly, Instead of counting the characters by 1, 2, 3, 4 in this expression, I can use here the command nchar that is the number of characters in y and it gives you here the, the answer say 26. So there are 26 characters in this say string and you can count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and 26. So there are 26 dots. So let us try to do uh, this thing over the R console and see what happens. So you can see here and then I will count here in characters number of characters in x, this is 19 
And similarly here if I try to count down the number of characters in y, then so this is my here y you can see here and which I want to find out here the number of characters in y, this is 26. So, that is a very small application, but it is very useful in programming in several situations. So, here you can see this is the screenshot of the outcome that we have just performed. Now, if we consider another application, you have seen that whenever you are typing a document in any word processors like as MS Office uh, Word or so on, sometime you have typed something and you want to replace that word with something else. So, you go to menu and say, say replace and then it asks that what you want to replace and in the second option it uh, asks you by what you want to replace. And then you say ok and then it uh, goes either step by step or if you say that no replace all then it will replace all the words with the new word in the entire document. So, uh, we can have a situation that we are writing a program in which we want to get an outcome in which some string, some characters, some words, some numbers they are going to be replaced by some new word, character, string or say number. So, how to get it done? How to do a replacement? And in order to do this replacement in R with the strings, we have two options. First option is that it will replace only the first match that it encounters or second option is that that it will replace all the matches in the entire document that is globally and in order to do such replacement of strings we have two commands here one is sub sub and another is g sub these are the two functions which helps us in replacing one sub string with another within a string. So, we have got a string and we want to replace some words which are occurring in the string by some new words or say new characters. So, the syntax for using sub function is that we write here the sub, then in the first place we write whatever is the old string whatever is existing in the string that we want to replace and then separated by comma we write another this option which is the new string this is always at the second place new string means the string by which you want to replace the earlier string and in the third place we have a string so, here we have to write the string in which we want to do the operation, in which we want to replace the older characters by a, some new characters. And similarly, we have say here another function g sub and g sub also has a similar syntax, say older string, newer string and the string in which you want to do the replacement. So, you can see here the structure of sub and g sub that is same, but then the question is what is the difference between the two? The difference is in their outcome. When we are trying to use sub function, then it replaces only at the first encountered place. For example, if I have a statement, then the R control will start from the first character, it will move from left to right and as soon as it finds the first encounter, the first place where it can match the character, 
it will just replace it and then it will stop. But when we are using the command g sub, then g sub also starts from the first character and it will move from left to right as soon as it encounters the first match it will replace it by a new string new character but it will not stop here it will move forward and then it will try to find the next match and as soon as it finds the next match it will replace the new string with the older string and this process will continue till the control reaches to the end of the string. So, the difference between sub and g sub commands is that sub is a local one, local in the sense that it will replace only the first match wherever it occurs, whereas g sub is the global command. It will replace the characters in the entire string, right, okay. So, that is the basic difference which I have written here. Now, let us try to take some examples and we try to understand how it, it happens. So, suppose I try to take here a statement here or a string number of participants colon 25, right. Now, what I want here is that I want to replace this 25 by 30. So, what I would do that I would try to write down here s u b and inside this argument I will write the older one what is here old that is 25 this is our old string which is existing in the string y. What is here y? y is the string in which I have stored this sentence number of participants. And this is separated by say here new string. What do you mean by new string? The older existing character in the string y is 25 and I want to replace it by 30. In that sense 30 is the new set of characters and 25 is the old set of characters. And this I have to give it here in this y that is the string that is the number of participants colon 25. And here you can see the outcome this will come out to be that this 25 is replaced by here this 30. So, here is the screenshot, but uh, we would like to do it over the R console so that you can have some confidence yes the things are really happening. So, you can see here y is my disk statement and that is my function. So, you can see here that this 25 is replaced by 30. Now, suppose I try to play with this thing which I always ask you to do it. Suppose I say okay, I want to replace 35 by 30. Let us see what happens it is not doing anything because there is nowhere 35 in the string y. And suppose if I say here that I want to replace the number by 30 in string y, you can see here, here I had got the number, but here now I have got a 30. And suppose if I say here that I want to replace the character here i by say here say 333. Three, three. Let us see what happens. You can see here wherever I have here here the first encountered i. You see here in this number there is no i. Then here in off there is no i and then there is up to here part there is no i. First encountered i here is at this place which is replaced by 333. Three, three. Now, there are some more i's for example, here i, but this sub command will not execute 
because sub command what it does it will start from say here number from n it will move from left to right and wherever it encounters the first i this will match with this highlighted i and this i will be replaced by this 333 and that what is happening here that this i is replaced and after this it will come back it will not move forward and that is why this i is not replaced. But I will try to show you in the next part that if I used g sub then this i will also be replaced ok why not to do it here ok let us see if I try to use here g sub you can see here that this i is also replaced by 333. Three, three. So, you can see the difference between this outcome where there is only one i is replaced and with this g sub both i's are replaced first i second i right. Now, let us come back to our slides ok. Now, I take some more examples which will make this use of sub and g sub more clear. I take here one sentence, Mr. Singh is the smart one and then Mr. Singh once again is funny too. Now, my objective is that I want to replace this name Mr. Singh by Professor Jha. Now, I have two options either I try to replace the first place where Mr. Singh is occurring, Mr. Singh will be replaced by the name Professor Jha or I want to replace the second place where Mr. Singh name is occurring also by Professor Jha. So, in this situation first we try to see how the function sub works. Now, first of all I have to give the command. So, I am saying that Mr. R please try to search for the name Mr. Singh and then wherever you are finding it in the first shot please replace it by Professor Jha. Then R asks me where do you want to replace? Then I say yes, please use the string y which I already have informed here. So, now r starts from first character and it moves left to right. It will say ok, I am going from here, yes here I find the Mr. Singh character and it simply replace Mr. Singh by say here Professor Jha and it crosses it and the outcome comes over here you can see here that Professor Jha is occurring here and now after this the R control will come back to its original position it will not move ahead and that is why you can see here this second name Mr. Singh is not replaced by Professor Jha this will remain as such and here is the outcome in the screenshot, but let us try to do it so that you get confidence that yes the things are happening. So, I try to copy this command over here, come back to R console, create my here this y, you can see here this is my here y and then I try to use the same command and let us see what happens, this is happening. So, you can see here that Mr. Singh which was happening here in y is being replaced by Professor Jha, but this is occurring at the first instance. Mr. Singh name which was occurring at the second place in y, this is not changed, but it remained as such right ok. Now, we come back to our slides, this is the screenshot. Now, I make another experiment, I take the same statement where Mr. Singh is occurring at two places, place number 1 and place number here 2. 
and we had used just now the command sub and we had seen that in the outcome that Mr. Singh is being replaced by the name Professor Jha is occurring only at the first place and the second place here too that was not being replaced. So, I try to use here another command here G sub global substitution and I say Mr. R please try to look for the word Mr. Singh and please replace it by Professor Jha in the string which is given by here y and all these commands are separated by this comma. And now I am asking that here this is g, so Mr. R please do it globally. Now this is here the outcome. This Professor Jha, this is at the 1, this is replaced by here Mr. Singh and now this Mr. Singh is also replaced here by this Professor Jha. And my sentence which was originally Mr. Singh is the smart one, Mr. Singh is funny too becomes Professor Jha is the smart one, Professor Jha is funny too. So, these types of manipulations also you can do in this R and well, let us try to do this G sub in this one. So, I simply try to come back to my earlier command and I simply replace here sub by G sub. You can see here now the things are happening. Both this Mr. Singh is replaced by Professor Jha at first place and Mr. Singh at the second place. This is also replaced by Professor Jha in the second place. Okay. So, now let us come back to our slides and here you can see the screenshot of the same operation. Now, we come to another option that is available in R. Sometime you have done something and your output is coming in say lower case letters that is small alphabets what we call in common language small a, small b, small c something like a, b, c and so on. And suppose I want to change the lower case into upper case that means I want to change the letter in say lower case into upper case. That means I want to change small a into capital A b into capital B and small c into capital C, small d into capital D and so on. So, I want to do this type of replacement that lower case alphabets are replaced by upper case alphabets or vice versa also. That means, the upper case uh, alphabets are changed into lower case alphabets. This type of outcome can be controlled by two functions which are here to lower and to upper. So, the meaning of this function itself clarifies what we want. I want to change into lower case and with to upper I want to change into upper case and what I want to change whatever is my string in this say here x. So, I will have a string x and if I use the command to lower or to upper, they will try to change the lower into upper case or say upper into lower case. And in case if you have any non alphabetic character or any character which is not an alphabet, then this will remain unchanged. So, this, this is an important point that you have to keep in mind that only the alphabets are going to be changed. So, let us try to take one example and try to understand how the things happen. Suppose I have a string in which I have written a sentence sound like our course will start from 2407-2017, right. And I have stored this statement in a variable say here x. You can see here, here this is in the upper case r, but this all these things are in the lower case. So, small alphabets have been used. Now, I want to convert all the letters into upper case that this means 
small c becomes capital C, small o becomes capital O, small u becomes capital U, small r becomes capital R and so on. And also you see here, there are some here non-alphabetic character which are numbers here. So, now I try to use here the function 2 upper and 2 upper will convert all the characters contained in this here x from r course will start from into a, an upper case and so, so I try to do it here 2 upper with this here x and this is here the outcome. You can see here that all the letters are converted into say upper case. And now, suppose I store this thing in say another variable here z, whatever is the outcome. Now, I have a new variable z in which all the letters are in say capital letters or say upper case alphabets. Now, suppose I want to change all of them into lower case. So, I am saying here Mr. R, please use the command to lower and change all the characters which are in this upper case into lower case. And you can see here as soon as I enter, this outcome comes over here. This even R is changed into small r, capital C is changed into small c and so on. But here you can see that these are the numbers, they are not changing and these two function to upper and to lower, they are not affecting the non-alphabetic characters. So, let us try to do it over the R console and can we can see what do we obtain over here. So, so that is my here x and I copy here to upper x. And you can see here that this is converted from small letters into capital letters. And now, let us try to make an experiment as I always say that why do not you play. First, I try to write down here instead of upper, suppose I type here to lower, let us see what happens. You can see here even this R which was in capital letters, this is converted into small letter. So, the moral of the story of this example is that in case if you have a a statement in which some letters are in upper case and some letters or say characters are in a lower case. So, when you are trying to say here to upper, so only those characters are changed into upper which are occurring in the say lower case. And similarly, when you are trying to do, uh, do to lower, that means all the characters which are occurring here in the upper face only they are converted. All other characters, all other alphabetics characters, they will remain unchanged. Now, let me try to uh, say store this outcome, say the two uppers of x into z. So, you can see here, now this z is here, this thing. And now, I try to make it here two lower, means I want to change the all uppercase letters into lowercase letters. So, I used here the command two lowers and please try to convert all the letters contained in here this z into small case. So, you can see here that is convert into this lower case. So, these are very simple operations, but they are very, very useful. And these are the say screenshots of uh, whatever we have done. So, now after this introduction to some elementary operations, we will stop here and once again I would request you that you please try to play with this command, try to practice this command, try to take some example and try to solve yourself. This will give you more confidence. And one thing you have to keep in mind as we are going further into this uh, course, it is possible that you might be forgetting the earlier commands. Please do not worry for these things. We are going step by step 
at one step, I am trying to expose you with one or two commands. Firstly, we try to understand the use and application of each and every command. And once we have reached to a reasonable depth, then we will try to use these commands together. One good thing in, in programming is that, in case if you do not use it for a long time, you may forget these commands. But the good part is this, as soon as you start using it, very quickly you will recall each and every command. So that is why after every lecture, I am requesting you to do this practice so that these commands are settled down in your mind and whenever we are writing a program, these commands will come back to your mind. And even if you have, if you are confused with the syntax, whether, whether there should be a comma or there should be a colon or there should be a square bracket or a simple argument, don't worry for these things. This help menu in R is always there to help you. You can always depend on it. So you practice, you enjoy and we will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.